If I put some strain gauges on a beam and then bend the beam, the ones on top, the ones that are going to be in tension, will be stretched out. And on the bottom, the beam is pushed together and likewise, the strain gauges on the bottom are pushed together. So the one on top here, the resistance will go up. Likewise, this one, the resistance will go up. If the bending moment is the same at both locations in the beam, then both of them will be stretched about the same amount and their resistances will go up by about the same amount. On the bottom, they're being pushed together, they're being compressed, and the resistance is going to go down for both of those gauges on the bottom. So if we'd like to know how much the resistance rises and the resistance drops to get an idea of how big a load we have bending this beam, we need to combine all of these resistors to give us the biggest difference we can get. This is usually done with a Wheatstone bridge, and the Wheatstone bridge is usually drawn in a diamond shape like this, with the resistances each on one leg of the diamond shaped bridge, plus five there, zero volts there. In here somewhere we'll have about two and a half in the middle, and we'll measure the voltage across there. If you were hooking it up in a circuit, you'd have your 5 volt supply, your 0 volt supply, and you'd connect your resistance to something like this. So if you look at that, that looks like the same circuit, really close. Both ends here are going to be at 5 volts. In the middle, it's going to be about 2.5 volts if these resistances are all about the same. So if these are about 120 ohms each, for example, like some of our gauges, then there'll be 120 ohms here and 120 ohms here and we'll have a resistance equal on both sides so we'll split the difference on the voltage and wind up with about two and a half volts there and about two and a half volts there. Now if these were all exactly 120 ohms then that would be two and a half volts and that would be two and a half volts and the measured voltage would be zero. But if some of these resistors have gone up a little bit and some have gone down a little bit, then that will shift the balance of this bridge. So if we'd like to make this one have a higher voltage, then we need to have this be one of the resistances that goes down and that be one of the resistances that goes up. That will make that voltage higher. If we want to have a big measured voltage here, then we'll need to go in the opposite direction on the other side. We want this one to go down in voltage. So we'll make this one of the resistances that goes down, and that one of the resistances that goes up. So if we set things up like this with the two that are going down on opposite sides and the two that are going up on opposite sides, that'll give us the biggest difference in the middle here. In the case of our cantilever beam load cell, where we're putting this beam into bending, increasing the resistance by stretching the two gauges on top, and decreasing the resistance of the two gauges on the bottom by putting them in compression, then if we want the ones that are going down to be in those locations, that should be one of the bottom gauges, and that should be one of the bottom gauges. If we want to get that direction, it doesn't really matter which one we pick to put in which position in the circuit. Likewise, if we want to get these ones to be going up, this should be one of the top gauges, and that should be one of the top gauges, so that these resistances are going up. That'll give us the biggest measured voltage in here in response to the amount that we're applying in bending on the beam. That measured voltage is going to be our signal for how much weight we're putting on the beam out here to force it into bending.